all right uh, good morning everyone and uh, today we will be moving on to the third installment of the seventh chapter in your text vistas the story titled the <coughs> sorry story titled ivan strives in o level in the first and second part we have talked about how ivan's also known as ivan's the break a person who has a habit of breaking out of prison wants to sit for o level german examination and the governor of the prison prisoner wants oxford prison wants to make sure that ivan's has no chance of escape now from the first and second part we have completed to the part where they are giving the examination ivan's is sitting for the examinations and mcleary the invigilator is with him inside the cell examination has begun and we left off on page 80 at the para which starts at at 10:51 am so we continue from there and today is the third part all right at 10:51 am stephens was more than a little surprised to see a gray regulation blanket draped round ivans's shoulders and he frowned slightly and looked at the examinee more closely but ivans the pen still between his feet was staring just as vacantly as before blankly beneath a blanket should stephens report the slight irregularity anything at all fishy hadn't jackson said he looked through the peephole once again and even as he did so ivans pulled the dirty blanket more closely to himself was he planning a sudden batman leap to suffocate macleary in the blanket don't be daft there was never any sun in the side of the prison no heating either during the summer months and it could get quite chilly in some of these cells stephen decided to revert to his earlier every minute observation at 11:20 a.m. the receiver once more crackled across the silence of the governor's office and mcleary informed ivans that only 5 minutes remained the examination was almost over now but something still gnawed away quietly in the governor's mind he reached for the phone once more at 11:22 jackson shouted along the corridor to stephens the governor wanted to speak with him hurry man Stephen picked up the phone apprehensively and listened to the rapidly spoken orders. Stephen himself was to accompany McLeary to the main prison gates. Understood? Stephen personally was to make absolutely sure that the door was locked on Evans after McLeary had self left the cell. Understood? Understood. So, at 10:51 a.m. when Stephen's the guard who was uh, keeping watch on ivans as the examination was going on he had another look inside the cell from the peep window and nothing had changed ivan still had a blank look on his face all right he was staring straight at the door the only difference he saw was that now he was covered in a regulation blanket what is a regulation blanket a blank a common blanket that is supplied to all the prisoners all right so he had been covering himself with a blanket other than that it was exactly the same and he thought that it was quite irregular and he thought maybe i should i should report to jackson because jackson had told him to report any irregularity but then he thought that this side of the prison doesn't get any sun even during the summer it is quite chilly so it is only natural for him and then he thought could he use the blanket to suffocate mcleary by throwing the blanket onto mcleary uh, jumping on him like batman but then he thought that no he is not going to try anything like that because i'm just standing here so he thought nothing nothing of it already right? it's normal it's cold so that is why he is covered in a blanket so again stephens went back to looking inside the people every minute or 2 minutes so again and again will is kiya karte the every 1 minute number 2 minute baad se he is peeping inside all right to check everything is all right then suddenly st 
Stephens received a call from the warden, all right, and the warden gave him certain instructions. Instructions he gave you that you personally should see out McLeary to the gates of the prison, and you personally should make sure that Ivance's cell is locked up behind him as soon as McLeary exits the cell. So Stevens was given the responsibility. And Stephen said, understood. At 11.25 a.m., the governor heard the final exchanges. Around 11.25, again, the microphone crackled to life, and it was McLeary. Stop writing, please. Silence. Again, McLeary. Put your sheets in order and see they are correctly numbered. Silence. Scraping of chairs and tables. Evans. Thank you very much, sir. McLeary. All right. Was it? Evans. Not too bad, McLeary. Good, Mr. Stephens. Very loud. Good, Mr. Stephens. The governor heard the door clang for the last time. The examination was over. And so, there were final exchange of words, all right? McLeary's voice crackled on the microphone and he said, please stop writing. And then he asked Evans, how was it? And Evans said, it was good. And then McLeary, in a very loud voice, called to Mr. Stephens, shouting Mr. Stephens because he wanted to get out. Now the examination is over and Ivan's cell door was open. How did he get on, do you think? Asked Stephens as he walked beside McLeary to the main gates. Now remember, as per the instruction received, Stephens has locked the door behind uh, Ivan's as soon as McLeary came out. Now he, again as per the instruction received, is walking McLeary to the gates of the prison. Oh, I cannot think he's a distinguished himself. I'm afraid his Scots accent seemed broader than ever and his long black overcoat reaching almost to his knees fostered the illusion that he had suddenly grown slimmer. Stephen felt pleased that the governor had asked him and not Jackson to see McLeary off the premises. And all in all, the morning had gone pretty well, but something stopped him from making his way directly to the canteen for a belated cup of coffee. He wanted to take just one last look at Evans. It was like a program he had seen on TV about a woman who could never really convince herself that she had locked the front door when she had gone to bed. Often she would get up at 12, 15, sometimes 20 times to check the bolts. He re-entered the D-wing, made his way along to Ivan's cell and opened the peephole once more. Oh no, Christ, no. There, sprawled back in Ivan's chair, was a man. For a semi-second, Stevens thought it must be Ivan's a grey regulation blanket slipping from his shoulders. The front of his closely cropped, irregularly tufted hair awash with fierce red blood, which had dripped already through the small black beard and was even now spreading horribly over the white clerical collar and down into the black clerical front. So as Stephen was walking, McLeary out of the prison, he asked him, how do you think Ivan says has done the examination? And McLeary replied, I don't think he has done very well, all right? And as he was walking McLeary out, and come, uh, he, Stephens thought to himself that it is, a wonderful, it is wonderful to know that the warden asked him and not Jackson to see McLeary out of the premises. He thought that the warden trusted him more than Jackson. So he reached McLeary uh, to the outside gates of the prison. Then he came back for his duties. And before going for his customary cup of coffee, he decided to check upon Ivan's one last time because he couldn't feel at ease. All right, There was a feeling that pushed him to check in Ivan's cell. So he opened the peephole once again. For a second, he thought that Ivan's was still there. But then, slowly, the regulation blanket which Ivan's used to cover himself up slipped from his body and revealed a person there sitting with closely cropped hair and a small black beard 
in clerical clothes and his face full of blood which meant that Ivan says had somehow managed to overpower McLeary put him in his place and then he uh, placed himself in McLeary's place got hold of a clerical dress and then he was able to walk out impersonating McLeary Stephen shouted wildly for Jackson and the words appeared to penetrate the curtain of blood that veiled McLeary's ears for the minister's hand fell feebly for a handkerchief from his pocket and held it to his bleeding head a blood sleeping slow truly a blood seeping slowly through the white linen he gave a long low moan and tried to speak but his voice trailed away and by the time Jackson had arrived and dispatched Stephens to ring the police and the ambulance the handkerchief was a sticky squelchy wedge of cloth McLeary slowly raised himself his face twisted like tightly with pain didn't worry about the ambulance man I'm right I'm all right get the police I know I know where he he closed his eyes and another drip of blood splashed like a huge red raindrop on the wooden floor his hand fell along the table found the German question paper and grasped it tightly in his blood-stained hand get the governor I know I know where he wants almost immediately sirens were sounding prison officers barked orders puzzled prisoners were pushed their way along the corridors doors were banged and bolted phones were ringing everywhere and within a minute McLeary with Jackson and Stephen supporting him on either side his face now streaked and caked with drying blood was greeted in the prison yard by the governor perplexed and grim we must get you to the hospital immediately I just don't you have called the police yes yes they're on the way but I'm all right I'm all right look look here awkwardly the he opened the German question paper and thrust it before the governor's face it's there do you see what I mean the governor looked down and realized what McLeary was trying to tell him a photocopied sheet had been carefully and cleverly superimposed over the last originally blank page of the question paper so he found Stephens found McLeary injured inside the cell and he called for Stephens alarms were sounded all right and uh, a lot of commotion started happening happening inside the prison and then suddenly McLeary trying to speak all right he was having a difficult time speaking and he was uh, he held up a cotton uh, he held up a white linen handkerchief against his injury and by the time another guard that is Jackson came to the spot his white handkerchief was already covered in blood all right he had turned red and he and then they were saying call the ambulance for him and McLeary said don't worry about the ambulance I am all right all right you call the police I know where Ivan says get me the governor and a lot of uh, commotion took place over the prison guards were shouting orders sirens were blaring all right and Jackson and Stephen supporting McLeary on either side brought uh, uh, McLeary to the governor who met them in the prison yard and the governor who was very tense said are you all right we should get you to the hospital and McLeary was not concerned about his injury at all he said have you called the police and the governor said yes we have called the police I know where Ivan says all right he had a piece of the German question paper with him he gave it to the governor and he said just look at this you will understand what I mean and then the governor understood what McLeary was trying to tell him the question paper all right had a last sheet which was supposed to be blank but then a photocopied paper had been superimposed on the question paper somehow one of Ivan's apprentice or one of Ivan's assistant or friend or partner had found a way to attach something to the question paper which was sent by the examination board 
with instructions on how to do what to do and how to escape from prison you see what they have done governor you see his voice trailed off again as the governor dredging the layers of long neglected learning willed himself to translate the german text before him so there was something written in german all right and mcleary said can you see this governor can you see what is going on can you see what i'm trying to tell you and the governor he had lost his practice all right he was very fluent in german but then he had lost his practice so he was remembering what he had learned and slowly began to read what was written there so it was written in german and i'll try my best to read the german text for you i sollen den schon wer abrite den plan genau folgen the which it is that punkt so uh whatever was written in german has been translated you must follow the plan already something the vital point is 3 minutes before the end of the examination but something something don't hit him too hard remember he is a minister and don't overdo the scots accent so in german it was written that the last 3 minutes of the examination is very important all right that is where you must act and don't hit the invigilator too hard because you know he is a man of the church all right and don't overdo the broad scots accent don't overdo mcleary's accent the way mcleary spoke in a broad scottish accent a fast approaching siren wailed to its crescendo the great doors of the prison yard were pushed back and a white police car squealed to a jerky halt beside them detective superintendent carter swung himself out of the passenger seat and saluted the governor what the hell's happening sir and turning to mcleary christ who's hit him but mcleary cuts across whatever explanation the governor might have given elsfield way officer i know where evans he was breathing heavily and leaned for support against the side of the car where the imprint of his hand was left in tarnished crimson in bewilderment carter looked to the governor for guidance what take him with you if you think he'll be all right he's the only one who seems to know what is happening carter opened the back door and helped mcleary inside and within a few seconds the car leaped away in a sprut of gravel so instructions were given to evans very in a very cunning way on a piece of paper that was superimposed on the last uh, page of the question paper which was originally supposed to be blank and the governor is still confused and at that very time the prison gates open a police car enters and an officer named super detective superintendent carter he jumps out of the car he salutes the governor and wants to know what is going on and then he looks at mcleary all bloodied up and he says who's hit him but before the governor could offer any explanation mcleary said forget about it forget about everything else i know where evans is i know where he has where he is headed and carter looks surprised and he looks at governor all right because he it's governor is a superior officer and the governor says well please do what he wants to do all right please follow him take him with you it seems he is the only one who knows what is going on and so mcleary the injured mcleary gets inside the car with detective superintendent carter and the car pushes off towards elsfield way where mcleary says evans is headed towards all right and so today we stop here and tomorrow we shall continue with the chapter now in this third installment of evans tries an o level we understand that evans has managed to escape as miraculous as it would sound he managed to escape somehow he managed to get hold of the question paper that was sent by the education education office as i uh, examinations office superimpose i mean stick 
a piece of paper which was photocopied to the last page of the question paper which was supposed to be blank somehow overpowered McLeary covered him in his blanket took McLeary's place and then walked out of the prison guard in fact escorted out by the guard Stephens so this has come the story has come to the part where Evans has done what he is known for. He was known as Evans the Break, and once again, true to his name, he is able to break from Oxford Prison as well. So, what follows up, we will be uh, we will be covering up in the videos which I'll be uploading in the coming days. All right. For today, I want you to read along the pages, uh, read along with me, uh, find the difficult words, underline, uh, and. Uh, find its meaning as well all right i won't be giving any assignments to you till the completion of the chapter so i hope you'll utilize this time to go through the chapter thoroughly all right it's a very interesting story but it has a lot of uh, twists all right in the plot so it might get a bit confusing so it's better you are well acquainted with the text so i'll see you next time with the fourth installment of this chapter till then take care